Well, hello everyone, Cynthia Tomain here with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining today's webinar that's being brought to us in conjunction with the CBOE Global Markets. I'm very pleased to have Russell Rhodes um, <clears throat> deliver today's event and discuss short-term trading with SPX index options. So Russell, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Um, do I have the control to show my screen? Not yet. I'm okay. a second Good. behind you here. So <laughs> okay. Now you should have control. Now you've awesome. got it. There we go. And that. And then everybody let me know we can see this. I uh, already got one question from Neil. Neil, I pro I'm going to get into your question. That's what we're all about today is uh, finishing up talking about um, switching over or maybe taking a look at SPX options versus uh, options on the futures that trade at CME, which is, I refer to them as the guys across the street because I guess you can figure out why. Uh, they're the guys across the street from us. Uh, we have we are friendly competitors with the guys over at the CME group. Uh, before I get going, I'm here for educational purposes only. I'm uh, going to go through some trading examples uh, in the past. Actually, not too far, not too far in the past. I actually took uh, some short-term trades from the first week of 2018 as my examples for today's webcast. Uh, you can see that we are now, we, we've actually gone through a name change over the past few um, couple of months. Uh, Cynthia did a good job saying that we are now SIBO Global Markets. Uh, we merged with BATS about a year ago and now we're involved in equities, European equities, FX, uh, VIX futures, Bitcoin futures, and then of course equity options and index options. So uh, we uh, we updated our name to match up with a more global, uh, basically a more global presence than we've had in the past. Uh, very short uh, and, and to the point today. Uh, Going to talk about S S and P 500 index options, uh, and then just give you some trading examples and uh, resources. Answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, if a question pops up and I know that we're going to get to it, I'll, I'll definitely mention that uh, and just and say, hold on, like I already have once. And we will, uh, we will definitely do our best to, to run through the material and answer every question that pops up today. And yes, the session will be recorded. Uh, and if you're watching this as a recording, my email address is at the end. And if you have questions, I, I, I periodically get questions from, from Interactive Brokers uh, clients and those that have participated in these webcasts. Uh, and I do my very best to, to respond to those questions via email. So uh, I give you my email address so that you, uh, so that you use it. Uh, so SPX index options, everybody's familiar with the S&P 500. Uh, the index options are the most actively traded options in the U.S., uh, not necessarily in the world, but definitely in the United States. Uh, the Korea exchange and the India uh, index options actually do a little bit better than S&P 500 index options. Uh, last year was the second year that we did over a million contracts a day. Uh, that comes to quite a hefty notional value as well. Um, so that, uh, um, so, you know, I, I just saw Adita's question. Uh, are the examples to be done on the Interactive Brokers platform not something that you're going to manage for us in advisor capacity? Absolutely. I don't manage for you. I show you how to do things and set you free to trade with your own personal outlook. So um, teaching you a little bit how, how these instruments work and going to show you a few examples that worked out in early 2018. Now we have all kinds of SPX option contracts. Uh, and, and what I think the most important thing to be aware of is there are third Friday SPX options that expire on the open. Uh, we do still have the old school third Friday SPX options that expire in the morning. Uh, today is the 17th of January. Uh, January 19th is actually a standard expiration Friday, and we will have SPX AM and SPX PM options that expire, but we actually do have PMs that now expire on the third Friday. So I, that I should correct, and I'm going to get a drawing tool out and put um, this right here. Just settlement date is every Friday. 
uh, that should actually be corrected. And um, I'm going to scribble on it so much it's going to be difficult to read. Uh, the uh, that's that's been updated in the past couple of months where we now actually have um, third Friday uh, p.m. and third Friday a.m. settled options. And on the next slide, I'm going to show you a bunch of the different expiration dates that we have available. Let me erase this drawing. Uh, we actually have right here, these are the expirations available as of Monday, January 8th. Uh, we had Monday the 8th, Wednesday the 10th, Friday the 12th, and then we actually had uh, the last two days, today and yesterday. Uh, typically, we have Monday uh, PM settled options. If Monday's a holiday, as it was this week, we have uh, Tuesday expiration. So uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday this week, we actually have options expiring. We do have, as mentioned before, we do have AM and PM options expiring this coming Friday. Uh, then we have a whole lot of PM expirations up until the next third Friday. And you can see, uh, you know, at minimum, we have two, we'll have three expirations a week. Sometimes we'll actually have four in the same week. If the last day of the month, the last trading day of the month is a Tuesday or a Thursday, uh, that will be a month end expiration. So uh, it's, it's, we have, just about every near-term expiration that you could want if you've got a short-term outlook on the markets. Now, we do go farther out. Uh, the, the orange dates that are, that are out into 2019 and 2020, those are actually leaps. And right now, we only have uh, AM settled leaps listed. When we get closer to those expiration dates, uh, those dates will turn from being orange to being green which means that we will have an AM and a PM expiration. Uh, the big point behind this chart is if, you, uh, if, you, if you've got an opinion of, of what's going to happen between now and the first Friday in February, which is February the 2nd, uh, you can actually express that outlook using uh, SPX options. Uh, so you know, the options at SIBO, I mentioned that last year was the second a uh, year that we had done over a million contracts a day. Uh, contract volume has grown year over year every year uh, with a couple of exceptions in there. Uh, it seems like our volumes actually, and this is a little bit counterintuitive, uh, but 2008, very volatile year. The year after, we did a little bit less volume. 2011, we had a volatility event in August of 2011, and the following year, uh, option volume tailed off a little bit. Uh, we haven't really had a big volatility event in the past few years. Uh, at least we haven't had a sustained one, and we've seen option volume growing pretty consistently on a year-over-year -year basis uh, since 2012. Uh, the notional value, because the S&P 500 keeps going up, uh, on average, last year we on a on a regular old trading day we did about 280 billion of stock market value. Actually, the the specific number is 287 billion of stock market value traded in the SPX pit, which is uh, about a floor and a half below me uh, in my new office at SIBO. Uh, so a lot is going on in that pit, and there actually is. Um, uh, still a pit, about 150 or so people actively trading SPX option contracts. Uh, just to show the importance of the non-standard or weekly expirations, uh, the dark blue lines are the average daily volume for the third Friday AM settled contracts, and the lighter blue lines are the vo is the volume for the uh, Anything that is not a third Friday AM settled option, uh, which is we, we use the uh, which is the, uh, the, the the any non-standard PM option contract. The month end actually is classified as a weekly. Uh, I don't name these things. I just talk about them. Do note that the lighter blue line is pretty much bigger than the dark blue line now. So uh, you know the participation. Uh, hasn't necessarily uh, diminished that much for the third Friday options, but it really has grown for the non-standard option contracts. Uh, somebody popped up in the question box and said they've seen the pit. Yep, it's actually pretty exciting to see the pit. Imagine if you are a trader in that pit and you have to try to keep up with this many different expirations. 
uh, you got to be a pretty smart guy to keep up with with all of that. They actually have to call out the specific dates when they are trading these option contracts now. So, getting into uh, some some uh, some short term trades that came up uh, in middle late December and uh, early 2018. I know I did a, a first week of 2018. Uh, I the, these trades are normally. When you read blogs that I write, or uh, you you uh, normally when I do webcasts, I actually will discuss block trades that I came across. Um, I actually created specific trades for this uh, for this webcast. And what I did here was I took a look at the S and P 500. Uh, it was up 15 points on December 18th, and and I decide that we have an outlook that we think that the move is overdone, that it might stall out over the next couple of days and one of my one of my favorite trades to to put on in that case is to sell a call spread you've got defined um you've got defined um, um risk with respect to this trade and you got a defined reward and i like that an awful lot i used to trade full time i used to watch the screen all the time used to mostly trade futures and trading futures uh, I needed to watch the screen all the time. Uh, I could put this trade on on the 18th and take the rest of the year off, and and either I'm going to make 230 or I'm going to lose 270. Uh, we got a question with respect to margin requirements. I'm going to hold on to that one, and uh, Cynthia and I will talk about that one at the end. But I promise we'll get to that one. So, taking the bid price and the offer price of the 2690 and 2695 calls. These are two-day options. Uh, we could sell the S December 20th, 2690 call at 620, and we could buy the December 20th, 2695 call for 390, and the net result was a credit of $2.30. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page today, every trade I'm doing is with the PM settled option contracts. Um, I just, I prefer uh, knowing exactly where I'm at uh exactly where I'm at when the uh when when the market comes to a close and we would know how this trade works out based on the closing price of the S&P 500 on these 20th. Uh Carp's asking does offer mean ask? Offer means the ask price. Um uh, bid offer bid ask. I think offer is a little bit uh, I think it's more of a floor person term and that may be why I use that instead of ask, but I am guilty of using some trader speak sometimes. So uh, this trade worked out particularly well. Uh, the uh, the in, And of course, this is a Monday morning quarterback trade showing how to trade. But the SPX is at, was at 2690, just a tad it above that short call strike. And we got a reversal in the market traded down to uh, and closed at 2679 uh, and a quarter on December 20th. So this trade actually, uh, if held through expiration, would have resulted in a profit of $2.30. Uh, I always like to highlight what could go wrong. I think people that do what I do and don't talk about, um, you know, don't talk about what could go wrong are doing a disservice. What could go wrong is where my bouncing red pointer is right now. And, you know, if if the market had followed through, gone up, gone up another 15, 20 points, and, and I decided not to trade out of it, the worst case scenario in this trade would have been a loss of $2.70. So one of the reasons I'm a big fan of vertical spreads, you've got that defined risk and reward. Uh, Sada's asking, when do you put the trade on and how many days to expiration? It honestly depends on the outlook for the market and what expirations are available. Uh, in this case, uh, December 18th was a Wednesday, and I used the, I believe it was a Wednesday, and December 20th was a, I might be getting my dates wrong here. Uh, December 18th was a day where the next expiration was two days later. How about we go with that? And because I'm talking about short term trades, I used the nearest expiration. Uh, I am going to show another trade. Uh, that that lasts a little bit longer, but uh, typically, thank you. December 18th was a Monday, so I'm using Wednesday PM expiring options on this. Uh, it really depends on uh, the outlook for the market and the timing behind the outlook. 
one other piece to the puzzle, and I'll get to this with the last uh, example, is how much time value might be in the option contract. So I'm actually going to show just buying an option. Uh, but Sada's so asking, so expiring the same week? Possibly. Uh, if, if we're talking about something occurring on a Friday, uh, I might look at the Monday or the following Wednesday options as well. So uh, the next two, three expirations, uh, and it just depends on where we are in the week cycle. So now we're on December 20th, which I now know is a Wednesday. Uh, and we, the trader now thinks the market's going to keep moving to higher levels. We're, we're, we're trading the range, uh, and the market has traced down about 10 points to 26.79. Based on this outlook, we could, and I skipped a strike here and got fancy with the graphics. Uh, I'll go back for one second. I decided to take a look at um, selling the the 2680 put, I think that we're going to bounce back up above 2680. And just for the heck of it, I decided to go down 10 points instead of five points and buy the uh, 2670 put for $3.20. Now notice, and, and I did the 10 point wide spread, um, notice that the credit is $2.70 on this, uh, but and we have a maximum potential loss of $7.30. Now, I was able to take in $2.30 when I was buying a call and selling uh, a call option that has a uh, has the next strike higher, which was five points higher. Uh, one of the things that you encounter when you're doing or when you're taking a look at uh, diagonal spreads with put options is option skew. And I don't have a picture of option skew, so I'm going to get crazy and draw one um, but this is kind of how the skew looks and maybe this is the at the money right here uh, if I'm thinking about selling an at the money put and buying a farther out of the money put the implied volatility for that farther out of the money put is going to be a little higher than it was for the at the money put the same thing would happen in the call options but it wouldn't be as dramatic I probably didn't draw this as well as I could have to scale but the reason that uh, we only took in 270 for a 10 point wide spread that had the same amount of time, basically, it, it relates to option skew. And option skew is more dramatic when you go out of the money on the put side as opposed to going out of the money on the call, call side. Uh, we do have a defined risk reward here. Uh, the uh, the downside would have been $7.30 if the S&P 500 had sold off. It just kind of stalled out and, and worked its way a little bit higher. Uh, again, both options expired out of the money, and the credit of 270 that could have been taken in uh, resulted in uh, you know a profit for this trade. Because again, if held through expiration, both options expired with no money or with no value or out of the money. Now, my fa the, the the next trade. Is kind of my favorite trade. I kind of saved my favorite for the last. Or, um, oh, this is one. I had one more short-term trade, and then I was going to get into uh, my fave. So uh, December 22nd. This is a one-day trade, uh, and I found this one pretty interesting. Uh, you, maybe you think it's going to be a fairly quiet day, and 10 minutes into the trading day, I pulled these option quotes on December 22nd. Uh, this is also an expiration date, I believe. Uh, yeah, this was a Friday expiration date, and I decided to take a look at <clears throat> um, selling the 2680 put. You could have taken in a dollar twenty, buying the 2675 put for 55 cents. But I am not done, and you could have sold the 2685 call for 290 and bought the 2690 call for a dollar ten. This is an option. Notice. This is an option, or all these options are options that expire the same day. Uh, you often hear people talking about iron condors, which is what this trade is, and they are usually talking about, you know, maybe uh, you know a few days down the road. Uh, you can actually find these sorts of opportunities. Now, this was December 22nd. It was the day before a uh, three-day weekend and the uh, Christmas holiday, uh, and the market did not move around an awful lot. We, we were outside of the range of, comfortable, of, of being comfortable with this trade, but the S&P 500 really didn't move around that much on the 22nd. 
and you could have actually put on this one day iron condor and as we saw before the uh the December 22nd expiration uh, settlement price was uh 268334 you can actually do a one day iron condor and find a fairly decent credit to uh to to take in uh, i was pretty tight on the wings i probably could have gone a little bit farther out and and priced in a little bit more of a range uh but uh it it's uh you know day trading with spx options uh, when we had one expiration a month or maybe two expirations a month, uh, you didn't have a whole lot of opportunities. And now with so many expirations, uh, you, you've got a lot more opportunities. And you can see through the, the volume growth that I showed before, uh, those opportunities continue to expand. Now, this is the one that I like an awful lot. And, and uh, the first day of... 18. And let's just say that we, we got through the holiday weekend, the New Year's weekend, and, and the market opens and you decide we are we're we're going we're taking off for the beginning of the year. I'm very bullish about 2018 and I I would like to uh express that in a trade that expires at the end of the week. So this was Tuesday, January 2nd, about 10 minutes into the open. Uh, taking a look at deep in the money SPX options. Now, when people talk about options, you rarely have people talking about a $39 option, but uh, stick with me on this. I'm gonna show you why uh, it actually does make some sense as a trade. Uh, I just pick, again, the, the I, I show different quotes. Uh, I kind of get arbitrary with respect to the trade, but we're bullish. Uh, we decide to buy the 2650 call and pay uh, $39 for it. That option has $3.30 a time value. Um, and uh, Matt, I'll get to your question in just a second as well. I got a question about at the money spreads. Um, the, but here we're buying the 2650 call, paying 39 bucks for it. We've only got $3.30 a time value. And I think everybody that's watching the market knows we took off to begin the year. In fact, we ran up to 27.43.15. Uh, and the net result here would have been a profit of uh, about $54 on uh, a $39 option. Now, that's an expensive option. And I totally acknowledge that. But an alternative is actually buying a futures contract. So I took a look at buying the futures contract uh, at the same time. I took a, a, I, I made us a great trader. I actually had us uh, execute, uh, I think on the lowest bid side in the, uh, the that minute period. Uh, and then I had a sell uh, the, the mini future at 2741. And the net profit here was, a, was 55.75, not point wise, that's a little bit better than, uh, than than the option trade, but it gets better. Uh, the option trade made 54.15. This trade made 55.75, but the multiplier is different. Uh, the multiplier is 100 on SPX options. It is 50 on the futures, which means the dollar profit was greater for the option than the future. Uh, the trade cost. Uh, I, I took a look at uh, what margins were on IB's website when I was putting this together, and it was $8,000 in, in some odd number afterwards, but just keep the numbers pretty. I said, you know, assumes overnight margin of 8,000, and, you know, the maximum loss, let's just say you put this trade on and Vladimir Putin decides to invade a neighbor and the stock market's down 5 or 6%. You don't necessarily know what your losses are going to be uh, when you buy the futures contract. You can't, you you don't know for a fact what the maximum loss would be. You do know what the maximum loss would be uh, through trading an option contract. So um, I like to, and, and and I wish I could say that that I had come up with this on my own. Uh, I actually came across my Jim Bittman, my predecessor at the Options Institute, and I uh, saw somebody buy some deep in the money SPX options when we uh, were first coming up with weeklies, and they only had like a day or two left to expiration. And and we're like, why in the world would somebody buy you know a hundred of those? And and we started digging, and we figured out 
that on a dollar basis, uh, if you were going to, you know, if you were targeting uh, some sort of, uh, <laughs> um, if they were, uh, if, if, if they were looking at some sort of trade that they were going to get out of by the end of the week or by the expiration date, uh, that, that buying the SPX options actually was a better use of capital than trading S&P futures. And I got somebody made a funny comment about the guys at the CME group. Uh, I am good friends with my counterparts over there. I'm actually going to an event with them uh, later today. So uh, it's a friendly competition, I promise. Uh, so, you know, just a handful of uh, short-term trades with the SPX options. Uh, you can learn about all the different types of index options and, and benchmark strategies at, at the uh, at that blog site and then or at the uh, benchmark site and then I write up trades I write up at least three interesting trades a week uh, typically in VIX the Russell 2000 area and uh, the VIX exchange traded products but uh, I think I'm going to start spending a little bit more time on SPX as well uh, just because I my my when I when I write these things up, I create a library of examples to work with, and I realized that I was lacking in SPX examples. Plus, it's uh, the most heavily traded market over here, so I, I assume there's a lot of interest. Um, let's see. Uh, so with questions, I'm going to get to questions that I can answer. Uh, wow, they're all starting to come in. So let me expand my question box and make sure I don't miss anybody here. Um, working my way backwards. Uh, Nick is asking, do SPX options have a closer spread or more liquid or about twice as expensive as uh, SP, s and futures options? I'm not really that familiar with, with the, I, I know that one of the fastest growing areas over at CME Group, and, and people that I work with here would, would hit me in the back of the head for saying this. Uh, I do know that, that, that they have been increasing uh, the volume over there. I just don't know, um, you know what the liquidity is like in that market. You know, when I was on everybody else's side where I wasn't working for an exchange, uh, if I were trying to compare markets, I would actually put them up side by side um so so that, that hopefully that that helped a little bit with that i'm not i, I know i gave a non answer but you know i put up the 2700 calls and the or whatever the at the money is right now with with spx and the es futures the the closest expirations together that you can get and take a look at what the um what the uh liquidity would be uh adita is it said do you have to call out spxw when you're trading them no you just give the date uh said on the previous trade I could have done a put spread with 2650 and uh the with the 2640 and the 2650 and made a premium of nearly ten dollars. Um no. Uh if you had done a put spread on this and I'm gonna pull up these prices uh, if you had, and these were both offer prices, so the uh, bid ask spread is not getting in here. But if you had um, purchased the, the, let's just say you purchased the 2640 for 4810, uh, it, um, you would have had to pay more than 4810 for this. I think it would have been, uh, I actually think it might have been like 4950 or something like that. Uh, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at offer prices. Let me slow down a bit. Um, you could have bought the 2640 for 4810. Uh, you probably would have sold the 2650 uh, for something like maybe 38 and a half. And you could have taken in, uh, you would have paid, bought that, sold that. Uh, you would have ended up with the possibility of maybe making around 60 cents or so. Um, you would, have, and these are calls; these aren't puts. Uh, you would have ended up with a situation where you could have made about 60 cents or so, and you were risking about uh, $9 and 40 cents if the market took a turn to the downside. So um, it's uh, it's actually opposite. You were saying make a profit of around 10. Uh, your losses would have been a lot greater. So. Um, that's okay. No, I said a sorry there. Uh, how do I decide if the market's going to move up or down? Uh, I like support and resistance. Um, 
that's just kind of the the if, if a market looks like it's stalling out in one direction or another uh yeah i didn't look at it uh, charts for when i put these examples together but visualize the market you know hitting resistance at i think 2690 and then maybe it's got some support at 2680 uh i th i find for uh, vertical spreads, that's usually a, a good methodology. Uh, starting to work my way backwards. Uh, significant difference between SPX and SPY options in the types of trades that I presented? Absolutely not. Uh, the one thing that you do have to keep in mind is that SPY is, uh, if, if you had bought the call option, the deep in the money call option, uh, if you didn't want to end up in a position holding uh, the SPY shares, you'd need to exit before expiration, whereas SPX options are cash settled, uh, which uh, you could have just held through expiration and the profit would be equal to the numbers that I showed you, uh, subtracting where the SPX went, uh, uh, subtracting strike price from where the SPX went out to, um, you know, and then the cost of that option contract. So, so great questions. I'm always a big, oops. I'm always a big fan of questions. So I wanted to put my contact slide back up there. Um, so I think, oh, and uh, Cynthia actually answered uh, the margin question a little bit earlier. Um, so I think, where am I, Cynthia? Sometimes you see questions I don't. Well, as soon as I can there unmute my phone, <laughs> there I am. I am still here. Yeah. And no, I'm not seeing any additional questions. And I do want to okay. mention on that margin, underneath the products menu on the Interactive Broker website, because margin is a very complex subject, we actually have a calculator there that will help you. I did put a link into the um, <clears throat> questions panel that everyone should see, or you can go out and simply navigate there and um, input some of those values. It does have to to do with um, <clears throat> the contract that you're trading, uh, the region of the world that you're trading it in as well. So uh, please take a look at the calculator. We're trying to make margin oh. a bit easier for everyone to understand. Oh, oh! I don't think you got to my question about a preference of at the money or out of the money spreads. Um, you I like <laughs> out of the money spreads. The the thing with an out of the money spread is when you um, with with SPX uh, or uh, and actually I like them better with the Russell 2000 and I think next month we may be talking about the Russell 2000 so I'll definitely get into that uh, but uh, the 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 issue is uh, for a short short term trade like this. Uh, you actually, uh, you know, you, you're not going to take in an awful lot of premium when you go too far out of the money. Um, so uh, the out of the money spread. Let's say I think that uh, the, you know, the the market is uh, not going to get above 28.50. I know that's far away from where the market. I think that's far away from where the market is right now. Uh, if I start looking at, if I think that's the ultimate top uh, based on. I don't know, market valuation or, or whatever. Uh, if I start to look at selling an out-of-the-money call spread uh, to actually take in enough premium to justify doing the trade, I'm going to have to start going farther out in time. So out-of-the-money spreads, I think they're great. You just have to have a longer uh, time frame. Uh, out-of-the-money spreads, you can still go 10 or 15 points out of the money with SPX options. Uh, and take in some premium, uh, you just end up with a very unattractive uh, dollar risk reward sometimes. So for out of the money spreads um, to, to justify the dollar risk reward, and this is just my personal opinion, uh, you'd want to go out three or four weeks or so. So that's, that's um, uh, it's not a, I know I showed a lot of at the money spreads today. Um, you know, if if I had felt like uh, the market wasn't going to was not going to go below um, 20. What was it? 29.50 when I was showing those calls. Uh, let's just say that I decided to do some sort of put spread uh, based on that call option pricing. I think I might have been able to take in about 30 cents and risk probably 9.70. And and that's just um, un you're going to get run over every once in a while in a trade like that. And so the dollar risk reward is not, um, I, I just don't consider it favorable enough to do something that far out of the money with short-term options. 
what's the advantage of replacing the um, the ES futures options with SPX options? I think it's not the um, it's it's basically the cash settlement. Um, I, that's the main thing that that comes to mind. I'm not sure what the liquidity is on the uh, ES options versus the SPX options. In fact, you would probably know better than I do because uh, Neil's saying that he trades them. Uh, I probably should do some more digging on that and, and report back. Uh, I've mostly just looked at doing an outright futures position. I know they've got multiple expirations available over there um, as well now. Uh, and I, I do believe that um, that there's a, a you can act, maybe you can trade the the options on the futures when you get deep in the money with using some side of some sort of margin as well. Um, yeah, Nick's just saying it seems like you don't get anything on a put credit spread. If anything, uh, you can get a little bit credit on a call spread, and that goes back to um, I'm going to draw again. I'm going to try to draw a better skew than I did the first time. Um, get pin. Here we go. This is going to be more of what it looks like. Let's say right here is at the money. Um, the implied volatility for put options rises as you go farther out of the money, and that's the use of uh, put options for, for insurance by portfolio managers. They tend to be willing to pay up a little bit more for an out-of-the-money put option because they get downside protection than an out-of-the-money call option. So uh, bear call options uh, are going to be a little bit, I, you know, you could actually say they're going to be more forgiving as opposed to uh, a put op, uh, trying to do a, uh, you know, a credit spread with, with put options uh, because the implied volatility rises so rapidly when you get farther out of the money. Uh, I I do these presentations and then I, I sit here and I think I wish I had done, the, I, I kind of wish I had shown uh, skew when I had done that. I'll keep that in mind for the, uh, for, I might actually write a blog about that and put up some skew charts because that's, uh, I feel like I should have done a better job explaining it. Uh, let's see. Young Feng is asking about uh, SPX 500 option codes. Uh, I assume if you put SPX or SPXW in that it'll show up on the option, um, the option trader. I defer to uh, Russell. <laughs> yeah. Russell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In looking for the SPX options, what I do want to mention in both the option chains, uh, whether you're working in Mosaic or the option trader, which also includes option chains, and it's in the classic version of TWS, each of those windows in the upper right hand corner uh, of the option chain section, you'll find trading class. Now, if you put SPX into the option chains, it'll bring back the um, <clears throat> uh, the monthly option chains. But what you want to do is use the drop down that's above your option chains uh, in that trading class section and choose the SPXW, which will then give you all of those um, <clears throat> uh, the additional uh, expirations that are available for SPX. So keep that in mind. It's the trading class section that's in the upper right-hand side of the option chains window, whether you're in Mosaic or the classic version of TWS. Okay. Ed, do you see anything else? I know a lot of things came in. Somebody just asked me for the link of where I write up trades, and I'm trying to. There we go. Sent that out. Hopefully, I sent that out to everybody. Um, just uh, uh, it's Cibo. Actually, I just put the wrong link when I tried to type and talk at the same time. Um, um, I write if up you trade, would, they, um, <clears throat> did you put it right in here. the chat panel? You'll actually have to put it into the. Oh, you put it in. Ah, there you well, go. It's right there. I'm just. <laughs> I just made I've it got simpler. my questions panel covering that up. Yeah, that's even better. There, right okay. there. Well, Cibo.com forward slash blogs. So. Perfect. Right. Excellent. So, right. well, well, I'm not seeing any additional questions. Um, are you? No. And it's free Wednesday but, lunch at Cibo. <laughs> well, don't <laughs> miss it. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, and I just got a question that uh, somebody uh, just got a question. Do I put it on Twitter? Yeah, I um, I will tweet out when I write these things up, most definitely. Uh, so. <laughs> 
there we go. And uh, yeah, Ru- yep, we're gonna eight. we'll talk about Russell 2000. I believe that's the next month. Uh, the, because the Russell 2000 options generally have higher implied volatility than SPX options. Um, and there's not as much uh, use for them in hedging. Uh, out of the money put spreads uh, actually work better with the Russell 2000. So we will talk about out of the money uh, out of the money spreads next month. And you're right; it is coming up on the Russell to, on the uh, Russell credit spreads is what we'll, you'll be mm-hmm. talking about next month, and that's coming up on February 14th. So we have a date. <laughs> um, yes, we do. Now, also, yes. Oh boy, <laughs> Valentine's Day. But for everyone else, if you haven't already signed up for the webinar, it is available. Registrations are open, and you can access that information from the interactive broker website. Go to the education menu in the webinars, and you'll find. Um, live webinar uh, where uh, the uh, Russell's next event will also be posted. So it looks like it is time to eat, Russell, and I want to thank <laughs> you for today's presentation. And I also want to thank everyone for joining us here this afternoon. By the way, we have been recording, and each of you will get a direct link to that recorded playback um, in about an hour or so. As soon as I can get it compiled and uploaded to our servers, everyone will get an automatic link. So with that, we are going to conclude today's session. You can all um, exit today's event using the X in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Thanks for your participation and a special thanks uh, to Russell Rhodes and um, SIBO Global Markets. (laughs) Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. (laughs) And thank you, Russell, too. You bet. Bye.